Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of What Makes This Game Awesome. Do you like fast paced games? Maybe a bit of Dank Souls or some good old fashioned Doom? Maybe even a bit of everyone's favourite blue hedgehog? Well now in the sensory overload category of speed, we have a new player. And no, it's not a sequel to Sonic Boom. I'm talking about Hyper Light Drifter and what makes this game awesome. When I think of all the games I enjoy, I can mostly divide them up into common features. A feeling of being rewarded for exploration, interesting puzzles, and ideas that make you think. Combat that feels fluid and natural, graphics that are beautiful in their own special way, and not necessarily realistic. Hyper Light Drifter is the perfect combination of all of these. I can compare this game to so many other amazing classics that I consider among my favourite games, and I honestly have to say I am so impressed with this game. This game is hard to sum up, mainly due to the story not in any way being spelled out to you. If you hate games with intrusive tutorials, then this game is a prime example of how you do it. Using almost zero actual English words, the game teaches you a unique combat system, giving you a feeling of speed and control. Now you know those other games where speed is the main mechanic? You know, let's get this party started! Kind of thing? Yeah, Sonic. I feel the Hyper Light Drifter has a speed that I much prefer to the blurry mess which is Sonic Speed. Instead of locking you at a speed where you can barely see what's ahead and grinding to a painful halt upon taking damage, Hyper Light Drifter gives you full control over your speed. Meaning while you still go fast, you have to actually be aware of what's going on around you. Being able to do this is a much better game mechanic than just going fast, and it looks cool too. Look at this shit, how cool does that look? It's so fast, yet I have full control over what I'm doing. Anyway, with all that stuff being said, let's get into the real meat of the game. So with every great game, okay, most of them, comes a great storyline. Hyperlight Drifter holds a unique experience for everyone who plays it in this department, as the storyline is told to the player with no voice acting, or no words at all in fact. This causes any connection with the character to be an emotional connection, wanting them to succeed and feeling like death is actually hurting them. Here's a dramatic representation of the basic storyline. You start off seeing your character's- <coughs> Uh, shit. Uh, so, surrounded by the, these dead, the, they, these dead thingies, um, and and then the colossal titan appears. Uh, okay, I'm just kidding. But the main premise of the story is that your character is desperately trying to get this diamond, which has been split up into 16 individual modules hidden around the map, four in each zone. There's a different zone for each compass direction. You're injured very early on in the first cutscene, and throughout the rest of the game, you're plagued by these weird hallucinations of the thing that wounded you, coughing up blood and limping at various points throughout the game. Game. This actually adds quite a bit of immersion to the game, as it feels like your character isn't just a player that you control, but that he, or she, it, has feelings too, and is limited by things other than your ability to control it, which makes it feel more alive. As your character travels across different zones, you feel like you're experiencing the adventure with them, and all the zones sport a very different style and mood to one another, having completely different assets, backgrounds, enemies, and moods. There's loads of variants in this game, and I loved every second of my time playing it. Even at the very end of the game, new gameplay mechanics were still being introduced, and having a world that rewards exploring means that even when I was stocking up for the last boss fight, I was still discovering completely new areas that I'd never seen before. There's a lot to do in this game, and if you're one of the people who likes to 100% a game, this will keep you busy for a long time. Anyway, I've talked about the story and the world, but now, the most important and longest part, the gameplay. So if you've seen some of my other videos on my channel, you'll probably know that I believe gameplay is what makes a game. Graphics and story just kind of add on to that, but solid gameplay makes a solid game. Hyper Light Drifter introduces innovative, addictive, and fun mechanics that change up the combat, making it a difficult but fair combat system that you can develop your own style for. In my opinion, the best part of Hyper Light Drifter is the dash, or warp, or whatever the hell this thing is called. It's the perfect mix of speed and control, allowing for a quick escape or a merciless assault, and it's incredibly addictive to do on repeat. It manages to make the normally drawling platformer sections actually fun. Hell, if moving around in the game's fun, you know it's a cool game. 
You also find various guns throughout the journey, which allow for different damages across different distances, and I found that these were amazing for constantly assaulting bosses, allowing close range with your sword and long range with a blast from your sniper rifle. Talking of your sword, this is probably the most used item in the game. Your character hits in combos of three, with a short break at the end leaving you vulnerable to attacks, meaning you have to master the combat system fast to stay alive. Also, you can collect health pods throughout the game, which make the seemingly impossible boss fights a little easier to manage. In your hub town, the place where you spawn, you can buy upgrades in exchange for credits that are rewarded for finding four of these pieces dropped by the enemies. These upgrades let you do things like dash faster, deflect bullets as you dash, throw grenades, have more ammo in your guns, hold more health packs, and upgrade your fighting abilities with new melee combat moves, like a sweep move and a dash stab. Now this all may seem like a very powerful arsenal, but the enemies and environments will push you to your limit, making you do incredibly fast inputs and precise dodges to keep precious health. Some later enemies have attacks that are able to one-hit you, so complete control is very important, and this battle system nails it. Fans of the Dark Souls series may see some similar features, but with a dodge being replaced with a dash, which I think is great, as they seem to have taken inspiration from one of the best ever combat engines, and just improved on it. You have to make your way across four zones in the game. Snow, desert, swamp, and crystal forest thing? Each of these are really challenging and can be done in any order you like, making the game quite a non-linear experience, which I appreciate quite a lot actually. Anyway, without dragging this section on too much, the gameplay is perfectly done in my opinion, with a well-timed battle system that feels fluid and natural, and incredible atmospheric level design. Where it matters most, and where it doesn't, this game destroys my expectations, and I can't seem to fault it. With great gameplay, I expect challenging and interesting boss fights, and Hyper Light Drifter delivers here too. There are four main story bosses, but there are also other hidden ones that can be found around the map. All of the bosses are different, require a very different gameplay type to beat, and have you on the edge of your seat the whole time. To the north you have a bird lord that tracks you in magic and requires incredible speed and accuracy to kill. To the east, a frog king that requires really tough dodges to avoid its projectiles, although in the version of the game that I beat it in there was actually a glitch where you could hide to the side, but you don't need to know that. To the west, a lizard knight with tough to predict combos and surrounded by spawning enemies, keeping you from properly hurting him. And to the south, a hunter with fast projectiles and the ability to bomb the floor, meaning you have to perform nearly frame-perfect dodges to avoid getting hit by one of the bombs and actually hit him. These are all extremely challenging, and if, like me, you loved every single one of them, you can take them all on in a row in the new boss rush mode that unlocks after you complete the game. After taking out all of these bosses and collecting all of the modules, you can enter the final boss fight, which is an incredibly tough fight against the beast that has been haunting you the entire game. It's so rewarding to take on what you've been killed by over and over and over again in the game, every time you kill a boss, stopping you from feeling that sensation of reward, knowing that you are winning, not just your character. The fight is incredibly tough, with boss states including dodging death spots on the floor, a multi-stage charge, mock bullet hells, dodging tentacles that destroy your health if you're hit, and a constantly increasing difficulty which makes this an amazing and rewarding final boss. I can't actually sum up very well how difficult this boss is, so I would highly recommend playing the game for yourself to find out. The game's ending is incredibly sad, and if you felt connected to the character like I did, then it comes as a sad realisation when your character stumbles out of the room, his quest completed, lies down on a rock, and dies, as this dog who's been with us the entire game passes on to another world. Finally, we see a cutscene of our character in the place shown at the start of the game, but the corpse is underneath him gone, and instead, just him. I loved this game, and this ending really got to me.
Hyper Light Drifter is a game that I knew I'd love before I bought it, but now that I've played it all, I want more. I love everything about it. The bosses, the environments, the gameplay, everything is perfect. I'm not one to give games incredibly high scores, but I actually couldn't find a place to fault this game. So with all that said, here's what makes this game awesome. How awesome? 10 out of 10 awesome. If you enjoy video games for the actual fun of the game, exploring and finding stuff for yourself, and you want a new game that really engrosses you, Hyper Light Drifter is my number one recommendation. It's still not my favourite game ever, but I like it so much I feel I need to start a list of my top recommended. So for now, Hyper Light Drifter earns a spot on the official top recommended list. I'm gonna keep adding to this as I review more games, so make sure to stay till the end of my other videos because new games are gonna pop up on here all the time. So that's Hyper Light Drifter. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and comment your thoughts on the game down below. Thank you for watching guys, and stick around for more reviews coming soon. Later.